remember that every one of you have this divine right. Hallelujah. To be a saver of life unto life. God is a giver of life. And intercessors are a saving force in the earth. They can heavy pia, hold back judgment. They can extend time. Hezekiah, when he turned his face to the wall and prayed, God sent the prophet back and said, I'll give you 15 more years. You can release ministries. You can release finances. You can neostonomy aloma hostai. You stay, you can do all, you can, you can save cities if God so will. He has told us in intercession that Tulsa is a marked city. Because vested in this city are some of the rich ministries of God. And that's the reason he said it's going to become a theater station for all of the United States to come to. They'll come here and be fed and go back to their own. He said, Tulsa is a marked city. He said, I'll also make her a model city. And he named the different ministries that were here. Hallelujah. And he said, as Oklahoma in the natural is known for her natural resources, oil, gas, and uh, the things that others would like to tap into. He said, Derista, Yunamita, Anodia, many will come to this state to tap into her spiritual resources. And I, they will go out of this state to other places with the message. Hallelujah. And I'd no more than given this. And he said, <laughs> he gave a rundown on the 48 states of the Union. And. <laughs> He said, oh, there are three that have the letter O, Oregon, Oklahoma, and Ohio. And it wasn't any time till the governor of Ohio came to Oklahoma wanting to tap into our natural resources. And I'd never been in Oregon. And he said, many of you who are, uh, who are some of the spiritual resources of this city will be sent to the other states. And you know, well, I got a call within just a few days and weeks to go to Oregon. And I'd never been there in my life. He said, these three, three is the number of a threefold cord that will be linked together some way. And I, ever since I went to Oregon, because of a former pastor who lived here and was once our pastor, and he called me to come to Oregon, and I'd never been there. And I tell <laughs> one man rose in the congregation when I'd finished up there, and I had a prayer seminar. They never had much praying done there, they said. And they said when they advertised that prayer seminar, they said, hmm, they all turned their noses down. <laughs> and he said, we're going to have morning sessions. And they said, ooh, worse than ever. <laughs> morning sessions. And I'd be bad enough. <laughs> <laughs> so we went in the morning sessions. And we had a few, you know, we had, oh, perhaps 50. And they have a church that fills up three times on Sunday. I'd say they have 2,000 in their congregation. <laughs> but uh, they didn't know much about prayer. And assemblies of God. <laughs> Believed. <laughs> and they, they just couldn't imagine it. Oh dear. They thought that'd be the dullest, deadest thing they ever got a hold of. So we got into that morning session. And I tell you, we got into the word. And then the spirit began to move. And oh, we just had the time of our life. Those people went out there telling people all over those, that area. And the next day we had, uh, we, well, we more than double. And... Uh, <laughs> Oh, we just, again, God moved in that place. And I tell you, we made prayer so powerful and so interesting and so inspiring that they, ooh, I tell you, they, ooh, they said, I didn't know it could be like this. And I said, well, it's like this. <laughs> this is the way it is. I tell you, I said, our prayer meetings are far more interesting and far less boring than half your meetings. <laughs> God comes in that place. <laughs> It's a veritable garden of Eden. So nevertheless, when it was all over, and I tell you, by the time we got to the end of the days, they said, oh, we should have known about how nice prayer could be before they just cried. 
I said, I'm sorry, but I'm ready to go. <laughs> but I said, now it's up to you. You're going to carry this on. Yes. You're going to set up something in this place, and you're going to carry it on. So that night when we closed the services, we had morning and night. And uh, they had a short testimony service. And one gentleman rose to his feet and he said, I'm going to tell you something. And I'm just going to show you that this, you see. He said, I'm going to tell you something. You're the hottest thing that's hit this place since the church burned now. <laughs> I, <laughs> I didn't get it. Because, uh, I, you know, my mind's running on out in the spirit, and then my daughter was with me, and she sang in the meeting, and <laughs> she said, Mother, did you hear what that man said tonight? And I said, No, what did he say? And she said, He said you were the hottest thing that hit this place since church. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd gone in for a prayer seminar, but they found out prayer could be exciting. Because it, it is. It's not this old dead dull stuff that we call it. Thank God it isn't. <laughs> So will you stand today and we're going to let Brother Hagen <laughs> praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Master. Praise his holy Hallelujah. name. Hallelujah. <laughs> Just lift your hands and your voices to God in prayer. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise your holy name. Yeah, Landala Yam la tukura de le prefe in chesta cabra cuto la son pora nis me me mi ambra di de cada procura da la sacan brada la paradudis ya sen de ne cambla dara stona da ramba chistis yam le jada cambra vena che chesta cabra do da califre beve chita casus Yele vrebe vidi stombra dana kri degam baran daka stangala bakuto ko susto ko pravitis. Yele de bradika de sampra kuredi de la bradisa sa nakandolo pro kotesa makate atasina kosa. Hallelujah to Jesus. Praise his holy name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. We call these afternoon meetings School of Prayer and School of Healing. We have dealt quite a bit with prayer. <clears throat> Many people are coming for healing, and so we deal mostly along that line. But really, for the healings to be accomplished, it must be backed up with prayer. Are you listening to me? Praise the Lord. And so we're learning more and more, and we're getting into the realm of prayer more and more. And we will eventually, when as soon as we can, uh, we are praying, of course, and we have people who are intercessors, people who are coming to pray. And, but we will eventually, in fact, our next building that we're going to build here is be, will be our prayer, healing, and counseling center. Hallelujah. And uh, we will eventually have a place where folks can pray, and there will be people there praying 24 hours a day. Watchman on the wall. Amen. And uh, people also will be able to call in for prayer 24 hours a day or for counseling. We'll get there. It takes a little bit of time. We wanted to do it sooner, but we just uh, had to be able to build to, for the uh, students that were coming in, you see. Had to, our priority had to be there right then. We've been backing it up with prayer all the time. We'll continue to do so. Uh, much about prayer that the Lord wants to teach us. We can talk a lot about it, but and we do hear a lot of talk about it, but we just don't do a lot about it. But we've got to put in practice what we know. I remember it's when I was praying one day way back 
February 19, 1943, which was on a Thursday. I knew some of you would want to know it's reading I told you. <laughs> Down in Gregton, Texas, a suburb to Longview, it is part of Longview now. And I would say that I prayed for five hours and 40 minutes or 45 minutes, 90% of the time in other tongues. And the Lord began to say something to me. See, it's when you get over in that realm that you, uh, that the Spirit of God can show you things to come. Because you see, these things that are to come, we have to pray them through or give birth to them. Whatever it is that God wants to do, he may show you what he wants to do, but then you've got to pray the thing into existence. You see, it is in existence in the other realm, but we've got to bring it into this realm. And I remember I wrote it down. I, I, I dated it and wrote it down. And here, here are part of the word. You said that the close, see, this is 1943 now. February 19, 1943. At the close of World War Number 2, there will come a revival of divine healing to America. Well, that revival of divine healing came, started in 1947, lasted through 1958. And I remember uh, the next year then, 1943, September 1943, I was preaching there in Longview. And uh, I, I gave what the Lord had given to me the year before. The building was filled with people. And when I, when I related what the Lord said to me, I didn't have to ask anybody to pray. The power of God fell on us. Ministers ran and fell in the altar. And I looked back across the congregation. The building is full. Every seat was taken. People stand around the walls. And I was the only person standing. I mean, everybody else was either flat on the floor or else on their knees praying. Well, thank God we saw that come to pass. Remember 1958, the Lord said to me, the next revival is coming. It's coming in the church. Now, some people interpret that to mean in the Pentecostal church, but I, I knew he wasn't talking about that. He's talking about what we call the church world. But we had to pray. And as we prayed and believed God, we prayed that into existence. And in December of 1962, in a meeting in Houston, Texas, uh, right in the middle of a sermon, the power of God fell on me, and I fell in a trance behind the pulpit on the floor. And I saw, among other things, I'll not go in detail of it, because then I was preaching strictly in Pentecostal circles, or full gospel, but I saw myself preaching to Baptist churches, and Methodist churches, and Presbyterian, and even Roman Catholic. Man, that was unheard of back there then. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we need, to, we need to realize the body of Christ is one. I remember Sister Grace prophesied many years ago, way back in the 40s there in Dallas, in Bethel Temple, 1947, I believe it was, in Bethel Temple. Way back there then, in the 40s, in the late 40s, she prophesied that uh, God would visit these churches in the last days, you know, what we call denominational churches. And in her prophecy went something like this. She, he said, the Lord said, you see, uh, many people will, will wonder at that. How could he visit such places? But he said, there is a deposit of truth that's there yet. You see, and he could honor that deposit of truth. Well, I remember I began to say to some of my brethren what I had seen in the Spirit, what God said to me about preaching to these other people. And uh, they told me that wasn't right. That wasn't God. Mm -hmm. And some of them forbid me to do it. And I went away and said it in love. I didn't say it because I was mad. I, I, I regretted it. But the Spirit of God said to me. And I said to other men, now you watch that particular church and pastor. You see, they don't recognize the body of Christ. If you don't rightly discern the Lord's body for this cause, many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep. I said, that'll become the sickest church you've ever seen. And you know they did from the pulpit to the pew. You never saw some such sick people. Yet they believed in divine healing. Now why did it invade them? Because they didn't recognize the body of Christ. They didn't discern the body of Christ as one. 
That's sad, but it's true. Well, God's moving in our day. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And he's not through yet. <laughs> I can hear the Spirit of God in me saying that very often. I'm not through yet. I'm not through yet. And I'll tell you something else. Some of the rest of us are not through yet. <laughs> Glory. Glory to God. We're not through yet. God's not through yet. Recently, and I, we had a minister from England here, my office, talking with me in Smith Wigglesworth didn't die, you know, till 1947. In the early 40s, you know, some of the earlier recorders we had out were wire recorders. No one ever saw, ever saw any of those or not, you know. And so they captured some things Wigglesworth said way in 1947 before actually he went home, to be with, just before he went home to be with the Lord. And this minister, I haven't received it yet, but he said to me, when I get back to England, I'll, I'm going to ask those people. I heard the recording myself, but I'm going to ask them to let me make a copy of it, and I'll send you, you know, it's not just the best sound in the world, but you can understand it. And said, he said, Wigglesworth said in 1947, now the revival that we have had in the Pentecostal movement from the turn of the century to now has been built mostly on the move of the Spirit, very little word. But there will come a revival of the Word of God, and in the 70s will be the decade of the Word. I think we've seen that. But in the 80s, you'll see the greatest revival that has ever come. And it'll be a combination of the Word and the Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I don't know about you, I don't know about you, but I believe it. Amen. I said I believe it. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. You see, all of these things are important because of a, a, of a neglect and a lack along some line. God raised up things. I know I made mention of the fact that a few weeks ago, Dr. Hulk, and you know, the first Baptist church here in the city was here touring the campus and in my office, you know. And he said, Brother Egan, I want you to know, you know, that I'm not a cynic and I'm not a critical. I don't mean this to try to puff you up anything, but I, I believe that God raised you up for a purpose. I believe that. I believe in your ministry. I believe in what you're doing. Since then, two of his deacons have been out here and filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking with other people. Praise God. But he said, uh, now we Baptists, you know, and I was born and raised Southern Baptist. He said to me, we Baptists, you know, we preach faith for salvation. We stop right there. We stop right there. People believe because we preach it. Then they have faith for salvation. And we stop right there. But he said, I know and you know and all of us ought to know that faith goes further than that. Amen. We stop at the door. But he said, I believe God raised up. I, I believe that. People like you, you see, to teach the word. And so we've had that. We've, I, I kept at it when it looked like there wasn't anybody listening to me. I mean, 25 and 30 years ago. But it caught fire in the right time. Praise God, we had a revival of the Word during the 70s. But you see, right on the other hand, you have to almost become overbalanced on one side because we've been overbalanced the other way to get the thing back in the middle of the road. But then we're almost getting overbalanced on that side now. Are you listening to me? You know, I'm a great faith preacher. I always have been. But you see... Uh, the impressions left almost. Some folks get the impression they shouldn't, but they get the impression, oh, well, I just believe God, you know. But it takes a manifestation of the Spirit of God to bring to pass that which you believe. Are you listening to me? And uh, we must have a revival of the power of God in this day, and we're, we're, we're in it, we're in it, we're in it, we're in it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, well, somebody said, who's right? Well, both of them's right. Sure, both of them's right. Amen. Amen. You see, that's where we become wrong when we, when we point the finger at the other fellow and said, he's wrong and I'm right. Well, we're both right. right. Like I said, you know, I have a friend that now I was healed. You know how I was healed. You've heard my testimony. Nobody prayed for me. Nobody anointed me with oil. Nobody laid hands on me. No poor gospel people around me. Nobody with gifts of the Spirit where the God, Spirit of God was manifesting himself. I just had to believe God on his word, you see. Well, 
I was healed that way. I know that works. I've preached it for years because it works. But then here's a preacher friend of mine. You see, he was dying. Dying. Given up by medical science to die. He's died. He's on his deathbed. But here came a fellow in anointed him with oil. And blessed be God, in three days he is up and out and healed. Well, now he anointed everybody. I mean, even in his healing lines. He'd have somebody to have a little, 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 little cup or something there with oil, you know, and everybody. I mean, he'd anoint hundreds of people. He believes in anointing with oil. I do too. So, well, who's right to be healed like you were, like that? Both of them's right. Both of them's right. Another friend of mine, you know, he's a nominational preacher, you know, he didn't believe in all this business of calling people out of the crowd and telling them what was wrong with them. Sometime when the word of knowledge and manifestation, but he went to a meeting because some of his folks were going. He wanted to gain ammunition to fight it. You see? He wanted, you know, you know, you can't very well talk about something you don't know about it. So he wanted to gain ammunition, see? He's sitting way back off up here somewhere, you know, and suddenly Evander just pointed back up that way and told him exactly what was wrong with him because he had a physical malady. And he just got healed, bless God. And instead of fighting it, he joined it. Well, now he believes in that. God uses him a whole lot that way. He'll just point people out, tell them what's wrong with them many times, and they'll get healed. Somebody said, who's right? Well, we're all right. I mean, God moves in all of these ways. It's when we say this is the only way God moves and he don't do that way that we become wrong. You see what I mean? It's all right. Glory to God. I believe in all of it. Can you say amen? amen. But here's what I started to say to you, and I'll get back around to it. Praise God. You see, what God wants to do in this day, and this is the hour for it, this is the decade for it, will not be able to come to pass unless we give ourselves to prayer. Amen. Well, now somebody said, if God wants to do it, well, well, he'll just do it. Well, if God wants to save people, why don't he just save people? Yet the Bible said, when Zion travails, you brought forth the children. Zion's the church, see? Mount Zion, the church, you read in the 12th chapter of Hebrews, you'll find that out. Mount Sinai is the Jew, you see. But we're Zion. When Zion travail, Paul made reference to the fact to the Galatians, my little children of whom I travail in birth again. In birth again until Christ be formed in you. Inferring that he had travailed in birth for them to be saved. Are you following well, it's God's will to save people. Why don't just go ahead and save them anyhow? No, it's got to be backed up with prayer. You see, somebody, some person, some group of people have to give birth to those things. And so what God wants to do in this day, uh, we, we, you know, it's just not a matter that he wants to do it. It'll have to be that some of us will give ourselves to prayer and he's looking through trying to find intercessors that will give birth to that which God wants done. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I can remember before the Lord had said to me, way back there in 1943, there will come a revival of divine healing to America at the close of World War No. 2. Remember, we were in World War No. 2 in 43. It wasn't over until 45, August of 45. Well, I found myself actually, you see, the Spirit of God stirred me up and I began to give myself. Now, I could have not done it. I could have resisted it. Could have not yielded to it. But I'd find myself, actually, I would come to myself. I don't know. I don't remember doing it. Now, other times, I'd wake up in bed and get up and leave the bed and go into another room in the wintertime and, and pray, you know, sometime two, three, four o'clock in the morning. But then there were times when I woke up. And I was in a, now when I went to sleep, I was in the bed. But when I woke up, I was in another room praying. I don't remember getting up and going in there. I don't know how long I'd been praying. I don't know when I came to myself. And I found myself. You see, I found myself. I mean, it just flowed out of me, saying over and over again. See, because we had, we had a prolific manifestation of tongues and interpretation, that's about all we had. No prophecy, whatever. Our churches, our church and churches, tongues and interpretation, that's about it. But I found myself saying over and over and over and over again, sometimes just repeating that one thing for an hour at a time on my knees. 
Lord, may the greater manifestations of the Spirit, the gift of faith, the working of miracles, gifts of healings be in manifestation. Over and over and over and over I prayed that. Well, I didn't ask him to use me. I could care less whether he used me or not. As long as these things were in manifestation, he did see fit to use me a little bit. But you see, that was what was happening. And then that's when the Lord said to me after a period of that kind, that time like that for months, that he said to me, at the close of World War Number 2, there'll come revival, divine healing of America. Now, we prayed that thing through back in 1943. It came to pass in 1947. Now, here's something else I want to say to you before we go. I don't mean to keep you so long. Standing, but after all, Sister Wilkins stood up a long time. It won't hurt us to stand up in a while. Standing, yeah, she's still standing. <laughs> Amen. Praise God forevermore. Praise you see, uh, what's happening in our midst today, uh, you know, of any local congregation, you see, are us here. We, we are a church here. Uh, there's a church in the home, you know, where there are believers. There's a church there. The Bible talks about church in the home. Any local group or prayer group or whatever, whatever is happening today in your midst or not happening is not a result of what you prayed yesterday, Tuesday, but result of your praying or lack of praying in the days and weeks and months and sometimes years that are gone by. Are you following me? Amen. Amen. Let's get stirred up, praise God, to get after it. What do you say? Now, there are folks that come. I want us to do some praying here before we go. There are folks that come to these services for help many ways, and we want to help them. And so if you want further counseling, if you want hands laid on you for healing, or you want to have been filled with the Spirit, I know one week just in our prayer room had 19 people baptized with the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. You know, people that had come in for some other, if somebody came in here from another city for healing, one of the counselors got talked to him, found out what he would say. Well, they got saved, got healed. Praise God. We had one fellow come up in Ohio, I think he's 93 years old, came for healing. But he went away talking tongues. Found out really didn't even need healing. He got filled with the Spirit. Praise God. Amen. Whatever your need is, God's interested and concerned. We have counselors and people that know how to pray, that'll talk with you, counsel with you, lay hands on you, pray with you, whatever the need is. You go right through this door to my left where it says exit, and the, the ushers will show you the next, next door down. Praise God. Now, if you're going to go there for counseling, go right now. If you will, please. The rest of you, not, if you have to go, I realize sometimes people have to go, so just if you have to, snip out quietly. But the rest of us, let's just get on our knees for a little while here. Praise God. You can stay as long as you like. When you get through praying, you can just get up and slip out quietly. You can stay as long as you like. Nobody will bother you. Praise God. Let's just pray, agree together, intercede. Praise His holy name. Thank you, Father, because you're concerned about us. Thank you because you're interested in us. Thank you because you're on the throne. Thank you. Mandali stambri Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for coming, sister. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We lay our hands upon these claws and handkerchiefs. May the same anointing of your spirit and power, healing power that anoints me, flow from my hands into these claws and saturate them. As these claws are carried under the sick and laid on the bodies thereof, may that power be transmitted unto those bodies. The disease or diseases depart from them. The evil spirit or spirits go out of them. And it shall be thus and so in Jesus' name. And we'll give you the praise and the honor and the glory for it all. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Zebra kiddis, stambra venidus, sora de la frapara devic, zambra vena campra ninginis, jangali tu corodulus, to preferidis, sisina frave vena mocoranunst, ejega de la calambrodu, cachiste cacera de la sustombre vena disis. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Je, galabra dosa, fra me ne ne kupra venis. Me me lien de lo kredis destis da fra mava janas. Me me balikin to koro no lo bravanas.